Welcome to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Our mission is to bring you discussions on a wide array of topics in the coaching world to grow players on and off the court. You can connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, and also reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Now, here's your host, Coach Mike Hernandez. Welcome back, everyone. Thank you guys so much for joining us, whatever platform you are listening to us on. I greatly appreciate it, wherever it is in the world you're listening to us on. Greatly, greatly appreciate it. Keep sending the support. Keep sharing the podcast to those around you. Can't thank you guys enough for all the support we've had as we are headed into year two of this podcast. So thank you so much. And let's get into our topic today. So this was a topic that a lot of you guys requested and were asking me, like, coach, we got to talk about this. I need, I need some advice. I need some help on this. And it's a big one. It's going to be about parent involvement and positive parent interactions. Uh, if you're a youth coach all the way up to high school, even up to the college level, um, you're going to have parent interactions of some sort. It's unavoidable. And what we want to discuss today is how to make those positive interactions, including parents, and help those parents be an ally to not only you, but to your player, because as anyone will tell you, the best situation is when the player, the coach, and the parents, they're all working together, all for the same goal. So our hope for today in this episode is we'll give you some tips, get you some ideas uh, to help get those parents on your side and, and make that a real positive experience for you and your program. So I'm very fortunate to be joined today uh, by a guest who uh, has quite a long list of things on their resume. Uh, which he'll get into himself, but currently where he is right now is he is the current head coach at Bloomingdale High School. I'm very happy to be joined by Coach Sean Van Zant. Coach, thank you so much for spending some time to join us today. I appreciate you having me. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, now, like I alluded to, I know that your, uh, your, your list on your resume about your basketball journey is, is a little bit lengthy, and that, that's awesome because you've no, had a lot of experiences <laughs> along the way, a lot of things you've been that. through. So, Coach, yeah. uh, go ahead and give us uh, an introduction into your, your basketball journey, where it's taken you, and the steps that took you to Bloomingdale. Oh, man. Uh, again, appreciate you having me, Coach. Um, so where do I start? And uh, from Cleveland, Ohio... Uh, I moved to Omaha, Nebraska, where I really learned how to play basketball at. Uh, from there, I moved to Tampa, Florida, when I was about eight years old. Uh, the re very recognizable coach at Tampa Catholic, uh, where he got D1 players coming in and out of there, was my travel coach, AU coach, where I learned the game from pretty much. Uh, that led me to going to uh, Wharton High School with Tom Tonelli. Uh, with another very recognizable coach in, in the Florida area, Tim Florida area. Uh, I played there for four years, uh, learned the game, learned how to compete, how to play hard, um, discipline, which took me to Butler University for a uh, very recognizable uh, Brad Stevens, who currently at uh, Boston Celtics. Uh, I did four years there. I learned the game, played with some great players like Sheldon Mack, Matt Howard, Gordon Hayward, uh, play for the Hornets right now. Uh, uh, four years, went to two national championships. Uh, from there, uh, traveled for the years, for, traveled the world for six years, played professional, uh, played in Ireland, I played in Canada, I played in the NBA D League. Uh, so um, then after that, um, I had an injury, which kind of stopped me from playing. Mm -hmm. uh, got to coach at a very prestigious school in Lincoln Memorial for two years. Uh, got my master's degree there. Uh, then I put my name out for head coaching jobs for high school back at home in Bloomingdale, where I landed at, which I'm gratefully appreciative of, and that's where I'm at today. I, I love the stories how people who coach or they travel, they go around the country, they go around the world, and then they, they kind of still end up home. <laughs> they kind of yeah, still end up kind sure. of all, all in that same area. I think it's, yep. I think it's great how that sort of sort of all works out that way. Mm -hmm. um, uh, I got to ask, uh, since you did play with Coach Stevens, what is something that you learned playing for him that you currently use now as a head coach at Bloomingdale? Oh, I mean, what did I use to be honest? Exactly. Right? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I mean, just start from the basics. I just I just used to hold holding yourself accountable. I used the Butler ways. Uh, if you heard that, that saying, uh, the Butler way, I think everybody heard that when it comes to Butler. <laughs> 
but I, I use that with my guys today. Um, uh, holding yourself accountable, uh, putting team first, way over me. Uh, I use all those things. Um, we we use a pack line defense like like I did at Butler. Um, it's everything you, you use at birth, just humility. Uh, all those things that I, ho I hope my guys accountable uh, of using those things. Um, uh, just just a team first aspect. Um, there's no one person over the team. Uh, I played with two NBA guys, technically three NBA guys, and those guys um, hold our team accountable. Um, they never put themselves first. So I try to relay that to my guys uh, today. Uh, that, that's awesome. And I think uh, the follow-up question I'm going to ask you kind of kind of works itself into that. Um, recently, I know that you just had, uh, you were recognized by your alma mater at Wharton High School, got, got the, the frame jersey. I saw that on Twitter and everything. It uh, looked great. And it made me think about, for you, thinking about your, your high school experience that you had at, at Wharton and, and how much the game meant to you and, and how much effort and passion you had for the game. When you think back to your own playing experience in high school, how do you kind of show that to your players? And how do you kind of think back to your high school experience and try to kind of get that same level of whether it's commitment, determination, passion, and kind of get that out of your current group of players that you have now? Oh, yeah. I mean, anybody who, who I wouldn't say even just coaching, anybody who played with me know that I hold a level of, of passion and, and competitiveness uh, when, when I, the way I approach the game. Um, I was like that at a very, very young age. Uh, I didn't take losing very well. I got very disciplined with my parents at that, <laughs> you know, <laughs> elementary, elementary school. Uh, I, I didn't know how to lose. Um, but when I got to Wharton, um, I think it got even heightened uh, because my high school coach, Tom Tanelli, was very competitive himself. Um, sure. He, he's very, uh, he was very disciplined. Um, if you didn't meet his expectations, you really didn't have a choice. If you're going to meet him, we were going to play for him. Um, a quick story. I mean, when I first got there my freshman year, I've never been around that kind of uh, disciplinary have you uh, with a guy who maybe thinks he thinks he said to you, maybe didn't like how you said it, and he, but he didn't care. Um, and I remember telling my dad, like, hey, like, I don't know if I could play for this guy. Like, I didn't, I didn't, I was like, I don't know if I can handle it. Uh, my dad was like, you have a choice. You're going to listen to how he's, what he's telling you to do, you're going to do it. And uh, ever since that day, I'm glad my father made me go through that tough love because Thomas and I is like, kind of like a father figure to me now. And I, I figured out later as I got older that don't listen to how he's saying it, just listen to what he's telling you. Because at the end of the day, it's all that love and cares about you. Uh, and he's, he's like a father figure to me. And he brought that competitive nature and fire that I had. I think he even heightened it. And I think without him, I don't know if I would have got to live where I am today. Yeah, I, I like the uh, idea of kind of the, the way, the, the words that are being said, because I've had a coach say before, like, to, to players, like, you don't have to worry ab about how I feel towards you when I'm getting on you. But if when I stop talking to you or when I stop trying, that's when you probably should be worried. <laughs> so it's, it's, yeah. it's definitely one of those things. Exactly. Where, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> you got to have to you know, see what the words are and, you know, the coach yeah. putting that much time and, and, and commitment and, and really pouring themselves into you for sure. Yeah. Uh, real quick before um, we get into talking about parent interactions and everything, since you did play, um, professionally, and then now you've kind of stepped into coaching. How's the transition been like for you? For, for as you described yourself, you were so competitive. You're you're out there in the court. You don't want to lose. To now having to almost kind of take that step back and not have the same level of control because you're coaching and not playing. How has that transition been for you? Um, it, it's been it's been a learning experience. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have all the right answers, um, but I do have great coaching staff who has helped me kind of make that transition in, into coaching because uh, my first year I still had that player mentality if to, you know what I'm saying like, you, oh, yeah. like I, have, I haven't learned that that transition to where you can you can't control anything you're not playing anymore and everybody's not going to have that fire inside inside them some people you got to have to bring that out of them and I'm still learning that day to today so you can't approach every player exactly the same way. Mm -hmm. um, so it's, I don't have, again, I don't have all the answers. I'm still learning. Um, but one thing I try, I have tried to relate to all my players is, is compete, compete your butt off and let the chips fall where they fall. 
You know what I mean? And I feel like today's game is it's changed since, since I've graduated college. It, even high school, the game's completely changed. I feel like the game is is more geared to offensive, offensively. Um, and I'm trying to because you try to tell my guy, you turn the ESPN all day, you you hear about offensive highlights and the dunks, the threes, yeah. et cetera. So I'm trying to relate to my guys, like no championship team has won without defense. And that competitive nature and that camaraderie and putting your putting your play, put your team first before yourself. So um, just trying to relay, to relay that message to them and you know, using other teams as, as an example. Yeah, it's it's crazy how much as you mentioned, it seems like the game has changed even in the past like 10 or 15 years. You think back mm -hmm. to even for me, like when, when I was, you know, even even playing just like 15 years ago and to think like, well, I don't even recognize some aspects of the game yeah, now, like exactly. the way from how exactly. I was coached or exactly. the way that exactly. I played it. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. you know, I, I totally get you on that mm -hmm. one, but in a hundred percent on the defensive part too, you get the buy-in mm -hmm. on that. Yeah. Awesome. So, um, so you can buy in perfect transition here talking about uh, about parents and, and, and the parent involvement in your program. So mm -hmm. let's start with the role of, of parents in your program. What role do you expect uh, parents to play in, in your program? Um, I mean, so when I have when I have my my so when I have my tryouts um, and I have my my parent and player meeting. Um, I like to have it all together so we're all on the same page. I don't try to separate my players from the parents. I try to have it all together again so we're on the same page. Um, I, I, I learned, again, I learned this from my coach. He told me, hey, when you get into this coach again, you got to make it black and white, especially at a high school level. Um, Tom Tomlin told me, he's like, hey, he said, when I have my parent meetings, I, I tell the parents, I don't talk about playing time. I don't talk about anything to, to, to do with your kids and why not playing a certain role. You think that's that should be fitted with them. Um, you know, you might not practice every day. You don't you don't know what they're doing in practice. So if your kid's not playing the minutes that you think they deserve or whatever, like, ten times out of ten, you can ask them why 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 they're not playing as much as they should be playing. Um, I try to make that as black as white as possible when I have my, my player and parent meeting. Um, for my going to my fourth year, I haven't had any, any issues in that department because I try to make it as black and white as possible. Um, when you're when you're kind of laying it out there like that, like black and white, I know mm -hmm. that sometimes for for coaches that can be a little bit unnerving because you feel like you're just sort of laying down the law and you're you're not in some cases you're not even like really sugarcoating it. You're just kind of saying it exactly how it is. Did you do you get any like parents who are like a little bit like taken back by that, or do you, or or they appreciate uh, how transparent and how open you are? How is it when you kind of? I would say I would say a, a, a little bit a little bit of both. Yeah. Um, I, I think I get more more backlash from the JV side of it because then again, when you were head coach at a at a high school, you you are in control of JV and varsity. Uh, mm -hmm. me, um, well, at least at my, at my high school, I, if J, I don't want, I don't. It's not like my JV coach is getting paid a hundred thousand dollars. So you say I try to take the, the, the you know what I'm saying I try to take the the brunt end of it. Like hey, if you have any parent issues, I'll deal with it. Um, the the JV parents seem to not understand that I try to I try to run my program as much as a high school or a college level or standards. So yeah. happy. Um, so they don't understand. Like okay, we don't get a Thanksgiving break. Um, no, ma'am, no, sir, because we have practice, we have games. We don't get a Christmas break either. No, ma'am, sir, we have a – this is this, just this during our season. I understand that this is family time, but if your kid decides to play basketball, this is what he has to deal with. Um, uh, for example, I had a parent to deal with this past year. He didn't understand why his son couldn't go Christmas break because you have games and, and uh, practices. I, again, I run my program like a college program. Just in case any kid is fortunate enough to play at a college level, this is what the expectations are. So if you can't meet those expectations, then maybe this program is not for you. Mm. Uh, I'm very blunt. I'm very honest. And uh, sometimes I do have backlash, but this is what it comes with playing at this program. So it sounds like when you're having that initial meeting or you're talking to those parents, you're kind of laying it out for them. Like this is where – 
I want this program to be. And for this mm -hmm. program to get here, this, this is gotta, what has to yeah, happen. You got to meet my expectations. Yes, yes, sir. And for you, it's it's almost a situation where you're aware in, in a sense, like this this might not be for everyone in terms of not everyone's mm -hmm. going to commit to it, right? And that's, yes. that's okay, right? Yeah, and I've, to go along with what you're saying, I, I've, my first year, I won three games. Mm -hmm. And one of the players that I did have who probably could help me take me from three, probably 10 plus, I lost him because he couldn't meet my expectations. But if you are, are a first year coach, you're trying to turn the program around from a loser program to a winning program, you're going to have to take those bumps and bruises that, that comes along with it to, to get the program to be where you wanted to be. Mm -hmm. so either you're going to let the parents or the players push over you and you're not going to you're not going to get what you want at the at the end of the at the end of the day down the road, or you're going to take the bumps and bruises now to understand. Okay, I'm going to take the bumps and bruises now to get to where I want to be to lay the ground, like to lay, lay, lay the, the foundation. You know what I'm saying? So, mm -hmm. I, he was by far my first year, by far my best player, skill wise, athleticism. But I, I lost him. But at the end of the day, I, I, I'm winning right now because the, the players and the parents realize, okay, he's not serious, like. He's very serious with what he's doing. He mean what he say. And at the end of the day, I went from three games. I went from eight games. And then I had my best season my third year. And it's just, so it's, it, it, it sucks, but in the day, it's what you have to do. <laughs> well, that's kind of a philosophy of wanting to win, you know, three games with people who have bought in and are, exactly. and are with me every step of the way rather than, exactly. you know, having to keep having this conversation every year yeah, trying exactly. to pull people, and, right? In those three games, the, my first year, those kids bought in, they, they, they scratched and clawed, and, and it's one of my favorite things that I've had since I've been coaching high school basketball. Mm -hmm. It's it's funny that you say that because I've had quite a few coaches who talk about seasons like that where, you know, maybe in the in, in terms of the win-loss column, it wasn't exactly perfect, but just the type of character of players that they had was so high and their work ethic was so high that in some ways it can be one of your most enjoyable seasons as well because yeah. of just how hard the kids work. So, no, sure. I, I, I totally get that. Um, and then you have that you have that conversation. You kind of kind of lay it out there. It's kind of it's kind of black and white from there. You mentioned how you would want the parents to like talk to the player first and the, the two of them can have that conversation because as you mentioned mm -hmm. the player would be the one who has a lot of like the insight and a lot of the knowledge as to what's what's going on have you found in your experience that players are either just uncomfortable having that conversation or just like don't really know how to have that conversation with their parents or do the parents just not ask the player and they don't they just want to go right to you um i i try to I try to cut the ability cord if that if that makes sense. Uh, okay, I understand. Yeah. Yeah, I understand that like these are you're not dealing with college kids from 18 to 21. These are kids from 14 to 18. You know what I'm saying? So I, I understand that it's a huge difference. Uh, I try to, to relate to the parents like, hey, this is not just a player commitment. This is you committed to this too because you have to drive the kid from practice home late night. Sometimes we got to share a gym with the girls, and sometimes the kids not might get home till nine o'clock at night. Then you got homework. So I understand that it's not just a player's commitment. It's a parent's committing to this program as well. Um, so I try to relate to the parents. Like, I understand that your kid may have been a star during the travel ball era or it might have been a star during the YMCA or what have you. Um, but this is high school basketball and you're not – guarantee any certain type of playing time we're not sharing everybody's not getting the same equal amount of playing time um so again i try to reiterate that the kid knows why he's not playing he knows why he's not getting the minutes that he he is getting because he's maybe for example he's not understanding the offense or his work ethic is not meeting my expectations or whatever the example may be so before you come to me Talk to your son and ask him why he's not getting that amount of playing time you think that he deserves. And I guarantee you 10 times out of 10, he knows why he's not getting it because I have told him why he's not getting it. Or mistakes he is making in practice, he, he, he has to do A, B, C, or D. All right? So yeah. before you come to me, understand you maybe you should talk to your son first. And I guarantee he give an answer to you before I got to reiterate. You know what I'm saying? So that's that's kind of what I try, I try to give to him. It's... 
it reminds me of uh, years ago. I remember when I, when I was coaching and I had a player and, and she wasn't playing that much and, and, and she knew that she wasn't playing that much and not only that, but she was fine with it. Like she was, she was fine. She understood that role and it was, wasn't an issue for her at all. And her parent, I remember got really upset about playing time and the kid themselves was like, no, it's fine. Like, I know why I'm not playing. Like, this is where I'm at and this, that, and the other. And she was able to clearly state it before I needed to, but that conversation just never happened. Yeah. The parent that's, and that's the kid, I, right? <laughs> that's, why I try to, that's why I try to reiterate doing, doing the parent meeting. Talk to your child first and I guarantee you they have answers why they're not playing. And my short um, coaching experience at the high school level is it's more the parent than, than the kid. If that makes sense, the mm -hmm. kid under the kid understands why he is not getting the minutes why he deserves. He's at practice every day. He's in film every day. Um, again, I run my program more like a college and a high school. We watch film a lot, a lot. So the kid understands why he's not getting the minutes that he's he should think he should be getting, and the parents don't understand how much goes into into the, in, into this into like. Like again, we're not getting paid that much, so yeah. they don't understand how how much sacrifice goes into the 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 practices, the the scouting, the the film, the late nights. They don't understand that. So <laughs> again, I try to just reiterate that it's 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 it's, it's, it's a lot. So um, talk to your kid because they they are practice, they are family. They understand why they're not they're not playing as much as they think they, they should be. So. Um, and I, kind of as an add on to that, then I, I think it's really important for, for coaches and, and, and I'll let you speak to it too. It's really important for coaches to have those honest conversations with their players about where they're at mm -hmm. and what's, what their role is and why their role is the way that it is. And are, are, are those conversations that you make sure that you're explicitly having with your players? Um, how, how does that kind of work so your players uh, understand exactly where they're at and there's no miscommunication between you and them? Yeah, just, just for example, I mean, after every season, I have a player meeting, just like you would at a college mm -hmm. level. Um, and I, I very honestly tell you, okay, this is what I ask them. So how do you think the season went? And collectively and individually, the player gives me their response. Uh, and then I have all my six coaches there with me and we – Give I give my my personal opinion. My sister goes through the exact same thing, and I would say ten times out of ten, the kids agree. Okay, you, mm -hmm. you need to work on your shooting. You need to work on your ball handling. You need to work on understanding the defense, offense, and this whole summer, this is what it's going to what's going to be because we can get better. Mm -hmm. uh, going to the season, um, the the uh, the kids we. We have a season, and again, it'd be the exact same thing. Okay, during the middle of the season, okay, Tommy, you're not where we, you're not understanding what we're trying to do defensively. You need to get better at this A, B, C, and D. So when you do that, I have more trust in you getting to the game, and you play more minutes. Uh, again, it for me, my my four years has just been more um, of the parents not really understanding why their kids not playing the minutes they think they, they did play they needed to play again I don't I try really try to avoid having that that parent coaches meeting um because they don't understand how much goes into this I think they still wrapped around it's most of my younger players I think they still wrapped around of the YMCA the travel ball everybody play equal amount of minutes I try to tell them like sir ma'am you maybe probably playing an equal amount of minutes to everybody else because you're probably paying money, and but the high school level, that's that's this, this is not what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's it's a different experience, I think. For just I remember in just some of the travel leagues and things in AAU, where not only like in some cases you know you put in money, but how easy it is almost to kind of jump around, you mm -hmm. know, like different this this program or this program and do this that or the other. Mm -hmm. You know, here I know every state's different, but here if you transfer, like you got to sit out your first like seven. Or yeah, eight same games. here. You yeah. can't exactly just keep hopping around like well, this mm -hmm. is what it is, and like mm -hmm. you know you're you're in Coach Van Zandt's program and. You know, here, here it is that here's where we're at, and this is this is how it's going to go. Um, yeah. Let's talk then on on the the flip side then for the parents who 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 have bought in and the parents who are with, with you in your vision and, and and they supported you. What growth have you seen from those players 
um, in, in terms of just, I guess, them kind of growing not only as players, but as people when, when you see that you and the parent are, are just right in line with the same vision? Yeah, um, I mean, I have, I have a few players who, who didn't play, come into me the eighth grade going to a freshman year when I first got them, didn't really play at all on a travel ball. Like mm -hmm. literally like the, mm -hmm. the kid that ended the bench. Uh, but the parents have put the trust in me and understand they, they see my vision and understanding like, hey, do my parent meeting and also could to go back with your point of doing my parent meeting. I also explain to them like, hey, like I know you might see me in the crowd, get on to your kid. I might be a little bit aggressive, but it's all, it is all out of love. I try to reiterate that. Um, I just care. I'm passionate about the game. And this is something I've been playing since I've been four years old. Um, I want to win. And I want the best for you. I want the best for your child. So again, don't listen to how I say it. Just listen to what, what, what I'm telling you. Um, and um, but yeah, I have some kids who 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 didn't really play at all during travel ball. They ate great going into their freshman year. Um, but again, their parents believed in what I was doing. Uh, I, I train. My gym is always open. I try to work with my kids' craft. I'm a gym rat. Even when I was a player, same as a coach and they go from from barely playing to being a, a part of, uh, of of my most offense, and, and I got some kids who JV uh, coming to varsity barely see the floor to being one of my star players. And because of that, because you've had that like positive success, and everyone's kind of worked together. What do those players who've kind of been in your system and they kind of know the expectations and they work towards your standards? What do those players in turn kind of help teach like the, the younger players? What are they able to kind of like give back in terms of leadership to them? Yeah, that, I mean, that, that, that goes to building the program. Um, I mean, I remember when I was going to college uh, my freshman year, the, the juniors and seniors put you in line quickly. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. I remember going, I just, just an open gym. I mean, hey, put yourself in a locker room. We don't, we don't take our cell phones in, in the gym. Uh, this is how we do things. Either you're going to fall in line with it or, or you're not going to see the floor. <laughs> and I fell in line real quick. Um, and it's kind of the same thing I try to do at, at, at Bloomingdale High School. Uh, my juniors and seniors uh, put my, my freshmen and sophomores in line quick. Um, this is how we do things. This is our expectations. And I think as you go into the season and the less you have to talk about your, your foundation, the less you have to talk about what the expectations are and your players are doing – Doing that, the people who've been there, your junior seniors, is the most. The more you can focus on the X and the O's, that makes sense. Because, yeah, you know what I'm saying because the, the junior seniors are going to set the underclassmen in line, and they know the expectations are without the without coach is even saying it. So it it, it makes it it makes this the season and practice a lot more smoother. Yeah, I mean, if I was an incoming freshman and I hear my coach telling me something versus I hear like one of the seniors telling exactly. me, like I know as exactly. incoming freshman, if I have a senior telling me that, I'm like, oh, okay. Like I know it's for, I know it's real. Like exactly. I know it's serious at that point. Exactly. And exactly. You save yourself all those conversations too, because they're taking care of it. And like you said, you can just focus on all, all of the basketball stuff. And I think going along with that, I think if you as a coach have to like year after year keep repeating like what you're about and what your standards are. I, I don't think it's I don't think it's setting. I don't think it's sticking. I think something's exactly. wrong at that point, right? <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Um, you mentioned about how um, you, you had a former coach who was kind of more of like that that father figure mentality, and I think that that's something that coaches, especially those who are kind of younger and newer in the coaching profession, may not always expect or necessarily be ready for and, and so in your experience um in your few years that you've been doing this have you found that you've had to sort of take on more of a role to your players than just being a coach have you had to kind of grow into anything like that yeah I mean I, I think in any any in any sport and just just being a teacher or anything you you have some kids who come from um a rough background mm -hmm. they might not have uh, a father in their life or if you're a, a, a female coach might have that mother in life and you you have to you have to take on that role of, of understanding and and grasping that it's more just about basketball i tell my, my players all the time this is more about basketball i'm trying to prepare you for life and i think sports really do that the ups and downs you're facing adversity things might not go your way you can't sit here complain about it you got to keep pushing forward um 
so yeah, you, you definitely have to take that take on that role. You might not want to, you, you might not <laughs> want to be that 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 figure, but that that comes with coaching. I don't care any level that goes from college, high school, professional. Uh, people yeah. go through things, and they might need that 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 shoulder per, person to lean on. So definitely have that have to deal with that for sure. So. What advice would you give? And I, I think I kind of know your answer, but I'm going to have you say it. But what advice would you give to that brand new coach? You know, they're 22, 23 years old. Maybe they just they just were playing college and um, they're, they're going right in their coaching role. And all of a sudden they're dealing with, with kids who, you know, maybe they have like absentee parents or, you know, their, their parents just aren't that active in their life. And they're like, I'm not ready to put on this role. I'm not ready to, you know, be a parent. I'm, you know, 22, 23 years old. What what advice would you give to, give to that coach in, in order to just, get them ready? Or is it one of those things where it's just like, you just got to do it because that's the job? I mean, I, I feel like, I mean, I feel like just, that's just being a parent. I got two little girls. Like, you, you're never going to be, <laughs> you can read, you can Google, you can read <laughs> multiple yeah. books. You, you, you're, you're never going to be 100% ready to deal with, to, to deal with being a parent. But the same thing going to coach. Like, I've been around some of the, the greatest coaches, but they can tell you A, B, C, and D, X, Y, and Z, but you're never going to to understand to you go through it. I think going through it is is, is, is the best teacher. The experience is the best mm. teacher. So my first my first year, first two years, even now, I mean, I, I've, I've failed at multiple things. Mm. Uh, but experience is the best teacher. And uh, I think I'm, I'm getting better. And my sister coaches I have are, are great. And I, I, I pick their brains all the time. Um, so my my advice to the first year teachers is 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 to roll with the punch. It's never going. It's, it's not going to be perfect your first couple of years. But I think when you when you're going through, you learn how you learn how to adjust and maneuver and how to deal with it. And with that, because I completely agree that some things you just have to face, some things you just kind of have to deal with, and th things sort of things sort of just happen. I, I I completely agree with with you. When you face those those setbacks, because all coaches do, and whether it's dealing with parents or whatever whatever the case may be, whenever you have those uh, stumbling blocks or things of adversity, um, what kept you from you know having that doubt in yourself or, or second guessing yourself? What kept you like to stay on track and stay on your course even as you're hitting those stumbling blocks? Oh man, that's a great question. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean, I've been facing adversity all my life, so it wasn't mm. really anything new to me. Uh, my first couple of years, I again went going for winning three games to I think my second year I won nine. Uh, my first year, I'm just like you—you you definitely will have doubts, I and mean, especially with competitors, it's like, okay, am, am I really fit for this? Am I really doing do a great job? But it goes back to 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 having. For me, it was having my high school coach. For me, having my college coach, who's somebody who lean to lean on, to call, to pick their brain. Um, if you if if you if you believe in what you're doing is right, for any coach who's starting off, is don't don't wither for that. You know what I'm saying, if you believe yeah. what you're doing is right, do don't 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 second guess it. Don't don't try to change it. Stick to your more stick to your principles. Hammer hand on that. And, and keep pushing because if you're doing the right thing in your heart, you believe you're doing the right thing, it, it's going to change. And when I went from winning three games to nine games and then to this year to to going to a, a conference championship and going to regionals, uh, I'm, I'm glad I didn't I didn't change up. I'm glad I didn't didn't listen to the critics because especially at the high school level, you're going to have the parents saying, he, what is this guy doing? He don't know what he's doing. He's doing, he doing this wrong, he doing that wrong. So just, just block out the outside noise and believe in your system and, and, and keep moving forward. Well, you brought up a, a really good point. I think that this is something as, as well that, you know, new coaches kind of deal with, especially when it comes to parents or even members of the community, especially when they're first starting out. Because for a lot of coaches, um, and this is just me casting a wide net, but if you're a young coach and you're getting that first head coaching job, I feel like chances are you're in a program that's that probably is struggling a bit and is it may have to do a lot of building up and, and, and rebuilding and they might have a tough first couple seasons or so and there might be adversity that they face. So to kind of prepare coaches who might be in that situation, I'm going to ask you as somebody who's kind of been through it in, the, in those first few years, um, what were some areas where 
you as a coach were like really being like tested or where you th there was criticism coming or where you felt like just that the outside noise chirping in what were some things that you kind of had to deal with and, and kind of push through um and almost in a way kind of block out um now i know the one was it was about the break so i, I wouldn't break, so I, I, could, I could say i could say multiple things so i'm, I'm, trying, <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm trying to narrow it down to oh it's to, all good um i i would say my 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 deep my, my my offense i'll, I'll leave him my offense yeah. um why is he not pushing the basketball why is he not why is he done trying to do this, this transition why he's not trying to do this but I knew my personnel, I understood the strength of my players. I'm with them every day in practice. I know what they're capable of. I know what they're not capable of. So I, I, I tried to tweak my offense based on what I had personnel-wise. I can't run up and down the floor if I don't have the horses to do it. So I had to play to the extremes. So we had to keep, we had to guard our butts off defensively, keep teams in the half court and slow the game down. And that gets, that's gonna give us the best chance to win. And I would say nine, 10 games that we did lose my first year, it was four points and under. So I gave my team a chance to win. We just came up short every, short every time. So I knew I was doing the right things. So And I didn't let, again, I let the outside noise waver me or try to change anything up. I knew what I was doing was right, and I kept pushing forward. And knowing that you're doing the right thing, I think one of the things that really helps coaches and, and will definitely help newer coaches. And you've spoken <laughs> on this a little bit was having your staff support you or, mm -hmm. or buy in or, or, or be, or, or work with you. So I, I wanted you to talk a little bit about that. Cause I think for coaches, especially if they're doing things with parents, sometimes those coaches can feel like they're on an Island. They don't have like any, any sort of support or they don't think that anybody's on their side. So yeah, yeah, how important yeah. has your staff been? How important is mean, your staff? I, I can't even, <laughs> I can't even, how, how blessed I am, honestly. I'm not just saying that because that's the PC thing to say, but I'm like very, very, very lucky um, to what support system I have when it comes to my 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 assistant coaches. Because when I first got a job, my high school coach told me, he's like, your assistant coach is great. He's awesome. Like, And for my, my high school coach to say that about somebody, it, like, you know that he means it because he just don't just say that about people. So when I heard that coming from him, it was like, okay, this, this is great. And right when I got a job, my sister coach called me. He's my head JV coach, and we had a great conversation. Even though he's a UConn fan, and he was like, I didn't hold on against him. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> he throws it in my face. He throws it in my face all the time. Oh, no, yeah. But all jokes aside, I mean, he, he's he's awesome. He's great. Um, he knows the game. He got a tremendous work ethic. Um, he does. He goes above and beyond what I, what I asked him to do. That's why you have a great relationship today because we both have the same work ethic. We both very, very, very competitive. Um, so we pick each other brain all the time. Um, and then I had a, a, a random um, DM in my in my in my uh, Twitter from a guy who played high division two, who just wanted to be around the game and and he's want to help out. So those guys have been has been a great supporting cast for me for this last two years. So I'm very very lucky um, to have the guys in my corner. Yeah, and just to have that when, you know, things aren't always going the best or, you know, there's just all this other other stuff going on to have, you know, kind of like your your soldiers in a way, <laughs> kind of have your yeah, guys who are with you. Yeah, of course. And and I, I think the – the to when you have such a coach, it's not to have to say yes, man. Mm -hmm. I, I think I think some some coaches have guys who, yeah, like, yeah, that's right. Yes, that's right. Yes, you're right. No, I don't – I tell my guys all the time, I don't want a yes, man. If I'm wrong, tell me I'm wrong. If you have a better idea and you believe that's a better idea, please share. Uh, mm -hmm. And and I, I want to pick your brain, pick my brain, because I want to learn. And I, I try to learn from, from middle school coaches, high school coaches, college coaches, professional coaches. I, I pick everybody's brain. So mm -hmm. I tell my guys all the time, please don't just be yes, man, around me. If you think your idea is better, let's talk about it. Let's try to figure it out. Uh, yeah, I, I remember a, a, a saying somebody somebody told me once, and I can't remember – who it was, but they said something to the the effect of like, I don't need you to tell me what I'm already thinking because yeah, I'm already exactly. thinking it, right? Exactly. Yeah. And I think that kind of just, just to kind of add on to that, I think it's, it's important as a coach uh, of any level, but especially if you're younger, newer, and you're kind of trying to navigate through all, all of these waters, you know, you got to have 
a lot of a lot of humility. You have to know that you don't know everything, and you have mm. to be able to, to to deal with that. And um, if I think, and, and it sounds like you're you're of the same mind as I am. Like, if ultimately you care about the the kids and them getting better, then you have to you know almost swallow your pride in a way and be willing to do things and listen to things that are going to help make you better, even if mm -hmm. you're wrong. Right? <laughs> That's just yeah. how it goes. Mm. Yeah, that's my like my sister coach. Like I, I played. I never coached high school basketball before, and sure. I graduated in two thousand and seven. So, you know, things that obviously completely have changed since I've been in high school. Mm -hmm. So I had to sit down with him and, and pick his brain. Like, what is working? What's not working? What's the game like today? So, and he was a, a great insight because a few years before I got there, they went to a regional championship. So, of course, I wanted to now pick his brain and, and learn uh, what's working, what's not working. Do you agree with this, that? So. Um, having having that assistant coaches around you is, is, is huge. And I know all the time at high school, you, you always don't have that. You don't have that. And at college is obviously completely different. So uh, in high school, you, you, you have to take advantage of that. Yeah, and and one of the one of the real real good advantages of, of having the, those coaches, especially if you step into a program and you have people who were there before, they can do a lot to kind of speak about like the like, like the culture and speak about how things things have been running and how things have been going and kind of give you a lot of a lot of useful information. And I think part of you know interacting with parents or including parents, uh, what that kind of all falls under is the umbrella of just kind of bringing uh, a program builder, not just a head coach. And so, mm -hmm. for you, what did what did you kind of learn? or have to learn about the difference between being a head basketball coach versus being like the head of a high school basketball program? I, I, I personally think that, I think at any level of us, especially at a high school level, the kids have to believe that you know what you're talking about. Mm -hmm. The kids have to believe that you're not just blowing smoke up their butt. You know what I'm saying? Like they have to believe like, that you mean what you say, that you care. Because once you get the the X's and O's and they believe, okay, he knows what he's talking about basketball-wise. Like, okay, we get that. But do, does he genuinely care? And once you get that, like, okay, he cares about us, the kids run through a wall for you. And I learned that my, my first year. Um, it took a while. Okay, like, Cody, does he know what he's talking? He, he has accolades. He has the, the background part. Mm -hmm. But just because you played basketball does not mean you can coach it doesn't yeah so once you get like okay like he knows what he's talking about then it comes to like does he care or we just uh, another kid who played basketball for him so once you get those two things you combine those two the kids went through a wall for you and I, I, I figured out my, my my first year like it took me a while I say the first half of the season to get those two 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 things and combine those two and once I got those two things our second half of the season was was amazing yeah yeah it's 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 really it's really cool story just to hear your story and kind of kind of talk about it because I, I I can see along the way especially in that first year that you talked about I can see all the different opportunities for a coach to really just sort of like give up or just sort of be like oh maybe this isn't for me or maybe you know I'm not really cut out for this but to have that stick to itiveness and perseverance I, th I think it kind of ties into your just like you don't you don't know how to lose right how competitive you are like mm -hmm. you're not gonna go out like that way you're gonna figure it out mm -hmm. you're gonna be like all right you know like whatever happened this first year like we laid the foundation but this isn't gonna be what gets me to like give up on this coaching thing we're gonna keep going keep going keep yeah. going and and we're gonna see this through which which to totally understandable uh you mentioned how um, you want to run your program kind of kind of like a college program and and I, and I think that for a lot of coaches the idea of doing that is is really interesting to them and, and you know tell, talking to parents and saying like hey you know we're gonna run this like like it's a college program this is the the level this is this is where it is we're gonna be at uh, besides the, besides the practices besides kind of those you know the fact that you know this is year you know this is especially in season Christmas break Thanksgiving break we're going after it uh, for coaches who might want to like really you know run their their program to that sort of standard what are some other things that um they, they would have to do and what are some things that you do that that kind of make your program up to that standard um not i mean not necessarily as far as like doing thanksgiving break or, or, or christmas break I, I i mean as far as as for example deep, deep defensively wise mm -hmm. the x and o's part of, of, of the game um I don't try to, hey, let, let me just roll the balls out and we're just going to play. 
pick up. You know what I'm saying? That no, because yeah. you, 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 I feel like you're doing a kid's disservice if you're not really teaching them the game. Um, if you're not teaching your kids shell drill, draw the <clears throat> trap in a box, uh, um, how who has two rotating, because you, you're not. I mean, I when I coach college, I have kids who came to college who didn't know what a shell drill was. So if you're not teaching your kids the game really for them to understand this, if, if they are lucky enough to go to the next level and they get there and their head not spinning. Because I was very lucky <laughs> to have a great high school coach. Yeah. Who taught me the game, the X and the O's, how to play the right way. When I got to college, my head was not spinning. I under, understood the lingo, understood what Brassie was telling me to do because I had a great coach before that. So I really took hold of that. Mm -hmm. um, so I try to teach my kids the, 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 the X and the O's part of the game and the work ethic and, and how to play the game the right way. So if you are, if you are lucky enough to get to the next level, you 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 understand what it takes to to compete at that level. Okay, light bulb just went off in my head, and something that I think it's it's really important for for coaches to hear, and and, and I think you'd agree with this that by the time players get into high school, a, spe a lot of the players may have had experience um, playing AAU, playing travel. They might be playing every weekend. They might be doing all these sort of things, but that doesn't mean that they ever really learned how to play basketball. Yeah, and uh, that, you're about, that's you're tough. You're about to open up a whole other can of worms that I don't want like to be very well. Be honest about. Um, <laughs> I'll just say that I don't know how much uh, shell drill or some of these other things exactly, going exactly. on at that level, right? And exactly, so, and I, 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 I don't, I don't want to knock that because I, I, I played travel ball, I played, I played it, but again, I was very, 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 very fortunate, very lucky to play with. Mm -hmm. coaches that did teach that like we weren't just rolling the balls out at AAU practice and 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 we we're playing pick up run up down the court no it wasn't that mm -hmm. I was very lucky we did shell drill we, we we talked about making the extra pass from good to great and you went to Butler you know that is so my travel ball coach who coached me played at Butler for a year before the USF but that's where connection started at so but I was very fortunate very lucky to understand to, to understand what it takes to play at that level and the X and the O's part of it. So, yeah. But I, and I, I feel like kids at this age that I coach at and even younger are, are lacking that. Um, that well, don't know, don't, that don't know what a shell drill is. And you yeah. go to some, you go, you go no. to some, <laughs> some parts of states like Indiana, they're doing that at, at six, seven, eight years old. Yeah. So, so when you come to Florida, some parts of Florida, kids that who are eight, 16, 17 year olds, they never even heard of that before. Mm -hmm. So I have to do my job to teach my kids the right way to play to play the game and the X and O's of it. So to tie to tie that back into uh, the the idea of parents and, and what that could lead to is you could have parents potentially, hopefully not a lot, but you could have parents potentially who think that their kid knows a lot about basketball because they're playing a lot. Yeah. But as a coach, and, and again, you've probably experienced this, like you realize that, okay, you, this, this particular player who's coming into my program, they might have been playing a lot of basketball, but that doesn't really mean they know basketball. And that's yeah, where there could yeah. be a disconnect, right? Yeah, but and, and also just not this – I missed a huge chunk of part that is black book off my head. But this, <laughs> off, the court, this off the court stuff, like – not that that's not to do with basketball. Like I say, I try to preach mm -hmm. my kids. It's more just about basketball. It's about life lessons. Sure. You can't, if you have a job, you can't just, okay, if your job till you be there at nine o'clock and you show up at 8.59, nine on one, that's not, that's not a good, that's, that's not a good look. That's, that's not help you keep your job. So you can't think that you're going to show my practice. If practice supposed to be at nine o'clock, you think you're going to roll in at 8.59, tie on your shoes. No, you're going to get disciplined. That's not how it works. So if you are fortunate enough to play the next level, you think that I rolled into Brad Stevens practice at 8.59 or practice at 9 o'clock. No, I'm not going to play, and I'm probably not going to keep my scholarship. So, again, it's, it's life lessons that have to be taught that's outside of basketball for the kids to learn. This is what it is. So if you do get a job and, and I want you to keep it, this is what you have to deal with. These are the lessons you have to learn. Mm -hmm. So, again, it's, it's more just about basketball. It's more just about the X and the O's. I try to teach my kids life lessons. So, yeah. Um, 
and well, what that what that leads to is, and and again, I'm gonna I'm gonna say this just so everybody listening knows. I I would say. 98 to 99 percent of the parents I've ever had are great and and they're awesome and completely supportive of their kid and just just do an awesome job um but one of the things I think that that coaches just have to be uh, aware of sometimes is that they're they might see you as a coach as just somebody who, who cares about basketball and that's the only role they expect of you to do and they might not even want you to care about their kid more than that and I think that as a coach, you know, that's a really good thing to communicate with your parents and say like, hey, like I get that my title might be basketball coach, but if that's the only thing I do for your son or daughter, then that's that's not good. <laughs> that's yeah, not exactly. a good thing. And I think exactly. that that's something you exactly. seem to communicate too, right? Like exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, and, I, and then again, I try, to, I try to tell my parents like, hey, I understand these are 14, 15, 16 year old kids and they're not driving yet. I, I get that. And <laughs> The parents got a million other things. They might have two other kids or, or what have you. Um, but the communication line has, has to be has to be great. And I, a lot of my kids, all my kids have cell phones. So it, it takes two seconds to send a text or a phone call. Like, hey, coach, I might be two minutes late or five minutes late. I try to get my kids to be at practice 30 minutes early before every practice. So when practice is at 4 o'clock, I need you to be at 3.30. If you're going to be late before that, just communicate to me. Um, I should try to put more ownership on the kids and, and less on the parents. Mm -hmm. um, like, I, like I say, I try to cut that book of court uh, quick and um, just this, this, this didn't hold more weight on, on their on their end and take it more off their parents. Yeah, and I think that when when that can happen and it just makes conversations, I think a lot easier. And we talked about this earlier when it's just you and the player talking. Yeah, when you and the player talk. And you already know that like the parent is with you and that they already got it. So there, there's no need necessarily to go to that other step. Yeah. It can just be that one-on-one -on -one conversation. Mm -hmm. Just seems to take care of, uh, take care of a lot of things for sure. Exactly. Uh, before we hit our, our concluding segment, I did kind of want to end um, on, on that, on going back to like a positive note that we talked about. Um, what have, have, have parents, I know we've, I know we've been there a few years, have, have parents, um, if, if they, they talk to you after their players have been there in the pro program a few years, have they thanked you? What kind of conversations have you had with those players who maybe have been in your system for a few years? How, what, what do parents say to you uh, for, for the level that you're holding your kid at? Um, again, I mean, everybody is not going to agree with the way you are doing things, but I would say it definitely been more pros and cons for me. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't have parents, uh, Thank me for for holding the kids up to a high expectations, um, to to not just just pushing them along or accepting mediocre. Uh, again, I, I I hold my kids to to a high standard, and and I think that we have kind of achieved more than what people expect out of us. Uh, I get again, I, I get a lot of, of coaches who, who are around me who say that, hey, you're doing a great job. Your coach staff doing a great job because I think if if I hold my kids just to mediocre, we wouldn't be where we at today. Mm -hmm. um, and I think a lot of my parents see that and, and they um, understand the, the expectation I'm holding and want their kids to, to, to achieve that. And again, and I think when I reiterate doing my parent meeting is more just just about basketball it's it's about school it's about uh, after basketball just holding a job and, and understanding what it what it takes and, and learning those experiences um is i have say more than pros and cons of, of the parents understanding what i'm trying to do have you uh in, in in your program um since you've been there a few years you you've had uh graduating seniors now you've had your classes of seniors come and go before before we hit that before we hit those last two questions any uh any success stories or, or, or positive stories you want to share of some of those kids and, and what oh, they're going to go off to do now oh yeah I mean I, I've I have kids who, who have joined the military I have two kids who joined the military in my first year who, are, who I still talk to today and um they, they they have thanked me for just 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 the discipline obviously if you join the military you have to yeah. have discipline I was um, gonna say, yeah so just hearing those stories, um, them thanking me and calling me to this day, we still text and talk to this day, that, that means more than me than winning losses mm -hmm. uh, any, any day. Just having that relationship and um, having the guys just, just, just talking to you still and 
um, laughing and joking means means more to me than anything. So um, it, it's, 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 it's been it's been amazing. And I can imagine now that you're at that point when you have, you know, kids, like you said, who are in the military or who are going off to doing, doing really awesome things. I mean, I can imagine for you as a coach, you're like, oh, yeah, I, I know I'm doing right in my program. Like, I know I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing. That has to help oh, yeah. a lot. Oh, yeah. I mean, and my assistant coach, I told you about earlier, I mean, mm -hmm. I, I, he's at my house or I'm at his house and his son played for me. And oh, I was yeah. harder on him. I was harder on him than, than, than any, any of the players. So, and him and his son, we have, we have a great relationship. We text each other and talk to each other to this day. And um, this, this, those relationships that you just build through the years and um, hear about your kids getting engaged or hearing about your kids going on to college or military, what have you. Um, I had a kid just sign the NAIA um, to play the JV team and having these relationships with him is just, again, it, it's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. And we've talked about this a couple of times how big of a difference you know even in the collegiate age of 18 to 22 but how big of a difference it is from 14 to 18 and i think as a coach you just have to be aware that that 14 year old who you're really on or you're really hard on like they they might they might not be uh, with you the the first week or they might be a little resistance but you just give them four years and see where they're at at 18 or after they graduate and you stick with them like mm -hmm. it's 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 going to be great but it's a process going from 14 to 18. <laughs> that yeah, is for sure. Yeah. Right? And, that, and that's, that's, but that's, that's something that you, again, for coaches starting off, that's something you have to reiterate to the parents. That's something you have to, to, to tell the players the first day of practice, Hey, I'm going to be on you. But again, it's nothing personal. It's because I care. When I stop talking to you and I stop getting on you, that's when we have to worry. When I stop communicating with you, that's when you have to worry. And I learned that at a very young age. Um, if the coach is on you and he's on to you every, about everything, that's because he wants the best out of you. He cares about you. Mm -hmm. So that's something you have to reiterate. The 14-year-old picture might not get it right away. The parents might not get it right away. But down, down the long road, they, they'll understand. And they'll think at the end of the day. Yeah. And, and again, if you have the vision of where you know that kid's going to be and, and you're going to look at him as a 14, 15 year old and be like, oh, man, it's be a long journey. But I know at 18 where, I, where you're going to be at eventually and you have that long term vision, stick to itiveness, which we just talked about sticking with it. Yeah. And seeing that vision through, then that that's when awesome things happen. Uh, yeah. I, I completely agree. All right, yeah. coach, to wrap up, there's a couple questions I ask uh, every guest. So I'm going to start here with this first one. Um, what is a coaching moment of yours from your coaching career that you think others listening would be able to learn from? Mm. Coaching experience. I, I, I honestly, I think being a head coach that you can learn from my coaching experience is, 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 is not giving up in yourself. Is not giving up what you believe in. Um, again, like I'm not gonna lie, my first my first two years mentally was rough on me. Um, only winning three games and then only win nine games, and, and just seeing the kids battle, scratch and claw, and doing everything that you ask them to do it, but they keep end up at the short end of the stick. But teaching, telling them like, hey, you, you were laying the foundation. You were doing everything I'm asking you to do. Just keep scratching and clawing and believe in the process. And at the end of the day, you're going to see that it is working. And in my third year, the kids who laid the foundation and, and the seniors and juniors and the sophomores and freshmen who's, who followed the junior seniors and then roll in for winning three to 15, 17 games, you will see that it, 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 is, it is working. But the yeah. first two years were, 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 was tough. Was, I'm not going to lie. Mentally, for me, it was tough because mm -hmm. I felt like I, I questioned myself, am I doing the right thing? And But I stuck with it, and I believed in, in what I was preaching to the kids, and at the end of the day, it paid off. Yeah, I, I liked I like coaches who, who, you know, when they have teams like that, in your experience, like you said, you know, you have those, those teams that – you know, they might be doing everything right, but coming up short. But as you mentioned, it's like laying the foundation and you almost want to be like, hey, like you come back here in a few years and, you know, and you'll it, see where we're at because of the foundation. Exactly. And, and those kids do do come back and they, and they still want to talk to the kids and interact with them and tell them like, hey, like it, 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 it works. You, you just got to believe <laughs> and you got to trust the process. Yeah. And it might seem very cliche, but it's true. You, gotta, you really have to trust the process. It might not work the first two years or the first couple of weeks or months, but you keep you, you keep doing the coach asking you to do and it's gonna pay off in the rope. 
Yeah, it's it's the whole thing about you know planting the tree and you got to give it time and then it'll grow and then it'll be there. No, for sure. Awesome. All right, coach. To wrap up, what I do is I give every guest what I call a sixty second soapbox. It's your platform to get out your final thought, final message, closing idea, something that you just want to leave our listeners with. So, coach, I'm going to go ahead and give you the floor. And if you go over sixty seconds, that's fine too. <laughs> I'm going to give you the floor. Go ahead and take it away. Oh man, I'm not I'm not really good with, with the <laughs> that, but uh, <laughs> no, man, I, I know I keep saying I'm really writing the same thing, but um, I never had any head coaching experience at all. I mean, I came from straight playing pro ball to roll into this coaching thing. Uh, I was fortunate enough to have a lot of great mentors around me, but don't 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 give up in yourself. Don't give don't think that you're doing the wrong thing. It's, it's a learning process. Um, it's not gonna it's not gonna go your way r- right away, especially if, if you don't have the the, the talent or the, the resources. Um, but believe in yourself. Keep grinding. It, it's, it's it's a long process, and I'm still learning today. I don't have all the right answers. Uh, but one thing I can give you is 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 keep that competitive drive. Um, don't don't stop trying to learn from other coaches. I pick everybody brain. I don't care what level you at. Um, you can learn something from everybody um, and learn what you what you pick from their brain and try to apply it to your into your coaching style. Well said. Could couldn't add anything anything more than that. Um, Coach Van Zandt, I want to thank you for spending some time talking about kind of your journey, about your program, about the way that you get parents and and everyone in the community involved and uh, set your expectations. I think. Uh, I think I got a lot of listeners who are like, man, I, I want my son to be at Bloomingdale <laughs> because of the uh, expectations it, you have for your players. So thank you. Keep up the great work that you're doing. Stick to it. And uh, best of luck going forward, Coach. Uh, thank you so much. Thanks for having me in there. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. Of course. And thank you all for listening. This was another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. We'll see you guys next time. Thank you for listening to another edition of the Basketball Teacher Podcast. Make sure to connect with us on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitter, or reach us directly through email at basketballteacherpodcast at gmail.com. Take care, be safe, and we'll see you next time.